create wonderful and easy to manage growing areas. Hey, I'm Justin Hitt from Prosperity Homestead. I'm gonna show you what you can do with a shovel and a hard rake. So what we've done here is we've gone and dug out the channel. Now remember, the different parts of a Earthworks Terrace is the plateau, the bund, right in the middle here, and the, the hip and the toe. In the toe is a channel. The channel is meant to slow and spread water and ultimately uh, helps us hydrate this entire surface area. Now your plateau areas are gonna be as level as possible. Now why is this important? Well, first off, look at that beautiful job there. It was, a, it was uh, broad forked and then a light tillage just to kill off the cover crop and then plant it with onions. There's simple rows in between each onion so somebody can easily walk, but that whole area there is covered with onion bulbs. It covered then with straw because we don't want to leave the soil bare, but unfortunately it does happen where soil needs to be bare. But my point being is that big flat plateau is easy to work with despite the slope being a difficult environment. Now we've shown you the incremental progress of how to go from a slope hill into the terraces in previous videos, but it's important to understand the different elements because maintenance is required. This area has to be cover cropped, it has to be grown, and we have to respect certain rules about establishing this kind of space. So we see a green strip. That green strip is wide enough for a riding lawnmower to go across. If you have a push mower, it's gonna be wide enough for a push mower, but it will always be two times the length of the hip. So if we're measuring this hip, that top is gonna to be two times the length of the hip because we need to have a stable bund or stable mound to keep the plateau where it's supposed to be. Because remember, we're getting roots down into the plateau, we're gardening there, we're, we're possibly tilling there early in the, uh, the life of the plateau. And because of this, it can hold more water than the dense bund and slope. So because it can hold more water, we are actually need to hold that water back by having some sort of dam or some sort of uh, mound. Now the mound, we don't want it to be like an actual dam because we're not trying to hold the water back. We want the water to slow and spread. Knowing the water can, the ground capacity has a higher capacity for moisture. Oh, it's easier if I write this stuff down and draw a diagram, but ultimately, no matter how saturated the soil gets, we don't want a mud flow. So what we have is these buns, but they do require maintenance. When they're originally put in, the top will be on a level contour. The sides will be at most a 45 degree angle. They could be a one to two slope. If you're not sure what that means, go to the previous videos. We go, we go through that completely. But again, it just means that this slope needs to be stable. And that means it needs to have some kind of cover crop, some kind of grass. Now, fortunately, the grasses, the cover crops, the greens, whatever we plant on here, especially if it's long rooted, will produce a lot of biomass that we can use on the garden beds. But how do we maintain the slope so we have maximum surface area, both on the plateau and on the slopes itself? So the slope itself, if it's smooth, it will have the maximum growing area. Now, this is all bumpy because it was put in with a tractor. It's brand new. This is the first season. All of that is fine. And even having stepped down terraces, meaning there's like a little step in here almost, um, is okay because we it's more important to have the vegetative growth than the soil now you might be noticing there's exposed soil here well previously this was uh, like the other side over here completely greened out but I've done something different than this patty over here so see how the grass is completely covering that that's the way it's supposed to be however this maintenance of digging out the channel which is supporting the water capacity for the lower shelf or the lower plateau, that soil has to go somewhere. Now, naturally, gravity and water will take soil downhill. So what we do here is when we dig out this path, we are slightly shaping the toe of the, the hip here. There's other names for it, but this is what I'm calling it for this video. But ultimately, the soil goes uphill. You always want soil to go upslope. Where do we put it upslope? We put it up slope above the, the slope. If it's on the slope, it's not up the slope. So essentially we throw it up here onto this uh, kind of median 
and we spread it out with a rake. Again, we have a shovel and a rake. That's all we use to maintain. We spread out the rake so that we're not killing off the cover crop. Now there are areas where the this soil was there's indentations and it needed a little bit more soil to really kind of level this bund out. And the reason I know that is because I took the riding lawnmower across it, and anywhere the riding lawnmower touched the ground or scraped the soil, that was a high spot. So we raked it out, and then of course we had some low spots. So again, this soil is coming from the bottom and going to the top to reinforce this bund, to make sure we never have any heavy rain come over the top of the bund. Because remember, even though the plateau is level, it slopes slightly back. And that's again why we're digging out the channel. Now, could we dig the channel out wider? We certainly could. Could we bring an excavator through here and dig it out even more? We certainly could, but it is not necessary. This was done very quickly. I put on some music, I relaxed, and I just throw the materials up slope. Now there are areas where there's little bumps and humps and stuff like that. It's not nice and neat. Could I have put that soil on the mound? Yes, I could have. However, I want the soil to move the maximum distance if it moves at all. So I'd rather sling the soil over the entire hill, primarily getting it on the top of the hill, then come back with the rake and just rake it down a little bit. And then it'll fall into the cracks and then we have, we have the grass still growing. I don't want to cover all the grass. So in fact, Digging out this trench, you only want to dig it out enough that you can walk through it or push a wheelbarrow. That's all you need. Now, we want to try to make this ditch level. I could come in here with a hoe and level it out a little bit better, but again, we're talking about long-term development and long-term growth. I'd much rather have soil upslope, not disrupting the cover crop, get some clover down on it or something, or get some other cover crop on it, get a good root mat, and then do the thing all over again the next time we're putting plants out. So we have access, we have the growth, and we have the kind of the, the slow maintenance of the buns. So they take on a natural form that grows grass. We want to grow grass and cover crops on these slopes, but no rooting vegetables. So you're not going to put a, a daikon radish cover crop on it. You're not going to put beets or radishes on it. You're going to put clover and pigeon pea and grass and grains and stuff that creates biomass, hairy vetch even, um, because we don't want to uh, have anything that goes into the mound. Because remember, the mound is gonna get dense over time because we're walking on it, because we're compacting it, and we're using it as an access point. Now, that's the value of putting small amounts of material up at a time, because as the small amounts of material are compacted, the, the soil is going to get harder, but we haven't disrupted the ability for those grass to get down inside of it. We want the grass. We want the deep roots in these buns because we, we want it to have a little hydraulic value. So another th factor that's going to happen, let's say this bed was mature. Now these beds are pretty young. They're still getting biomass and such. But if this bed was mature and this walking path was full of mulch that was breaking down, we'd actually rake off the topsoil and use that on the plateau while we get, we rake it off down to clay. And you've seen that on the videos at my house and, and where we, we have the mulch paths. You would dig that down to clay because we only want to put clay on this hill. Now we can top dress this hill with compost, but it's better to put the compost on the plateaus. It's better to activate the compost in the growing areas and simply have these areas for uh, just cover crop growth. Now, some folks will put wildflowers on here, but once these hill gets a certain height, we're going to shave off the materials with a, with a blade or a string trimmer and then let the grass grow back again. So when the grass is about knee high, all that grass will be raked off and used as mulch on the garden beds. We do not want to keep mulch on this hill after we get cover crop. We want to keep it planted in cover as long as possible, as consistent as possible. And even in cases where you have these little step downs, and we can look at this step down, we'd rather have grass on this shelf so that we can just dig the soil out from under it and that sod can then lay down straight because any diagonal slope needs to be grassed out as much as possible and that's why we don't throw soil onto the slope we throw it on the top of the hill and then it might get knocked down a little bit when we rake off the top and make sure the top is nice and flat but again we're not throwing it on the hill where it's more likely to come off in a rain event so everything gets thrown up on the top there's some areas down here that we probably could have dug out better. I don't, I'm saying we, I, I did the digging. Um, but but we're, not, we're not too worried about it. As long as we can get in and out of there, we're fine. Now, as we're gardening, as we're putting out plants, 
we might go in and dig out that channel even more and then the material from the channel goes upslope. Now on the plateau area, we're gonna be doing beds. Again, I like to show you how beautiful this is up here. We're gonna be doing uh, ad hoc raised beds. We're gonna be doing um, drilling in flowers, plants, uh, other things that field on the other side that's kind of new is going to end up getting a bird seed mix. You want to stay tuned for the videos for that. But ultimately, we are working with nature using a system that has been perfected over thousands of years. This particular system and the maintenance of the system works in Southeast Asia, it works in tropical environments, it works in temperate environments, it works in India, it works in, in Europe, uh, in, including environments that have hard freezes. It works in so many different places and it can be done incrementally. Now we had equipment out here to do this. You don't necessarily need equipment because the maintenance itself will build up these buns. But again, if you have equipment, use it, but you don't have to do a lot of tuning. As long as you have the key elements that we discussed, you can do it at a small scale as I've shown you in previous videos. And you can do it at a very large scale like I'm doing here. But I wanted, I want to show you, see we've thrown the soil up here as well. Um, I want to show you how little soil is exposed on that slope. Now, yes, there's a lot of soil exposed in the foreground because that's getting planted out. The greenhouse is full of starts. Uh, you want to, you, you want to time this stuff out right. I had just got done spreading lime, for example, but this bund is actually sloping slightly back and there's kind of a channel at the edge of this plateau. And then as we look down here, look how steep that is. You can maintain that steepness, assuming you keep putting the grass on it and then you throw any soil up over top of the, of the edges. And so eventually that hill over there will be more steep. It'll be about a 45 degree angle. You never want people to walk up and down these slopes. You just want grass. And then of course, when the grass gets longer, you can hand scythe it, uh, you can string trim it. A lot of things you can do, but you have to rake that material off because if you just lay the material on the surface, it is going to uh, kind of uh, mat out the grasses themselves. So again, we're giving preference for some grass, especially on that outer edge. We never mow out to the edge. We have a good couple wheel length at that edge because we want that, that vegetative strip. But as we bring up materials from lower on the property, we're flattening out this top area so it's accessible and mowable. I pushed a wheelbarrow right out on this to do the lime. I didn't really have to carry bags of lime everywhere. And ultimately these center areas become a bit more flexible. And so that top level channel is gonna slow and spread water. You could end up with other channels in between, but again, the soil always goes up slope. The composted soil that's going to start building on the surface, that topsoil stays on the plateau. We rake it away in the channel to set it up slope. And that channel could be, could be four foot wide if you want. It doesn't have to be just a little footpath. But again, I'm promising you how you could just two simple tools, you can maintain this. And that's exactly what I've done. I've maintained this hill with it. I walked over the top and raked it out. I've got a nice little access path so when people start bringing out uh, flats to start putting plants out. And what they're going to do is they're going to bring the flats out, they're going to put the plants in, and they're going to put some straw around it. Now with straw being nine dollars of, of bale, square bale, square, square bale, it just upsets me saying it. You want to have as much biomass as possible. So as you can see, all of the soil that I threw from the bottom to the top was raked around so that the grass can grow through it. Now I can throw some seed down on top of this. Throw a little lime down on it, try to get a cover crop growing. It is currently March, so we're not going to get very many cover crops kicking up. And that's again why we don't bury the grasses. So I hope what I've, I've shared with you makes sense. It is a little bit of work and effort, but it's going to build a terrace that is going to last for a lifetime. If you do this every season and you just keep sending that soil up slope, you're going to end up with a nice, beautiful sturdy terrace all the erosion on the plateaus is going to is going to go back towards the channel so that any you're not going to lose any soil off the property you're going to be able to spread and soak nutrients as well as water you're going to be able to grow 
much faster and more consistently in beds that are really quick, really easy to put together. And then you're gonna have bales and bales worth of biomass all around the area. You don't have to mow these top parts very often. Just basically let the grass get about knee high. And then cut it about six inches high with a mower. Or more excitingly, with a scythe. And then lay that material out as mulch. Start building up that soil biology. Start building up that soil uh, you know, organic material and it becomes easier and easier to manage each year. You're essentially digging out the channel and top dressing the slope. So above the slope, you're top dressing above the slope, raking it out, and then if it does rain, rain will take the little micro materials down the slope and they'll stick inside the grasses that are there. But we haven't matted the grass, we haven't caused any type of disruption to the cover crop itself. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. If you're interested in uh, the application of these types of methods, we have opportunities to build these all over our region. And if you'd like to come out and help on one of these projects, it does take surveying. I will run a uh, A-frame across the top here and into the channel. Um, it doesn't have to be completely perfect, but it does get easier and easier over time with two simple tools using this type of method. You can visit www.sustainable institute.com that's where I'm located or www.prosperityhomestead.org to ask questions I'm sure if you ask questions at either site you're going to be taken care of the links are in the description below and I'll see you in the next podcast I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead